YouTube, thank you and welcome. Welcome to Leon So Daddy Wooly here. I came across this video, you see it on your screen, right? And you know, it was posted six years ago. And let's watch it together. You know what I mean? Tell me on the comment down below what you think. And if you have any other candidate that you think you have in mind that's coming for for any party, that, well, we already know who the SPP company. But if you get any other candidates who you think say I for post or do this such on, let me know. You know what I mean? And you see this video with the scene on screen. If you don't know what I'm to move, I just please check this video out. It's on your screen right now, so you can know a little bit about this guy. But this video that you about to watch right now, man, this video really just, you know, um, he just laid a plan out. You know, six years ago. Just sad that nobody saw it. Alright man, check it out man and let me know what's up. The own star man, see you on the other side. Minister Kamara, welcome in Belgium. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, we are here to see um, what Sierra Leone is doing uh, to attract those investors from uh, Western Europe uh, or the whole of uh, Europe. Um, and first question I would like to ask is why is it interesting for European investors uh, to go to Sierra Leone and invest in your country? Thank you. Let, let me start by thanking you very much for the nice coverage you've done on, on Sierra Leone. We hope um, this document we, we, we will be um, appreciated by people who access it because it's, it's a very frank uh, uh, story on where Sierra Leone is at the moment and what Sierra Leone is trying to do to, to attract investors as uh, development partners, not that business, business people, but mainly as uh, development partners. Um, since you, you, you left us, I think we've tried to make a number of, um, quite a lot of progress in, in, in pushing forward those uh, factors which we think are of the greatest concern to, to investors generally. Well, we, we try to focus European investors given our historical, historical background. We, outside, since we last had the, the, the trade and investment forum in, in, in London, which was very successful a couple of, uh, one or two years ago, we've tried to, to continue to improve on the, on the investment climate. In the areas of doing business for us and the indices, I think we've made a very good um, improvement. I think we've now, we are not, in the bottom bottom 10 again and i think uh, as time goes on we'll try to, to improve upon that but on our own we're also looking at those other aspects like the legal framework what it takes for investors to to for instance to register companies to go through all the legal processes and procedures i think we've shortened this now it's, it takes a very very short time i understand from from the sleeper it's less than 10 days at the most to, to register a company and so the hassle, the hassle has been reduced considerably. And then of course um, when it comes to the, the other aspects, we are doing a, a market-based market economy so we are really liberalizing significantly in terms of capital inflows, capital outflows, readers of dividend and, and this sort of so I don't think investors would have the hassle of running around to, to seek permission for, for, for remittances of, of their investment once they make profits and, and once it is consistent with, with, the, with the tax structure of the country but of course even the tax regime it will be negotiated, they will know, and government is very liberal. We have quite a comprehensive um, a package of incentives, depending on which sector you, you, you are going. And then on our own, we are also looking at infrastructural bottlenecks, roads, telecommunications, and I think here again, we are making a lot of um, improvement. Coming and going out of the country, there are two ways. At the airports, we are trying to modernize the airport. Uh, we have um, a three-pronged project that we are trying to, to sell. Uh, we call it a tripartite project, which looks at modernizing the, the, the Lunga International Airport, uh, making it internationally competitive. We're trying to build a new city around that area, including hotels, everything, so that uh, you don't have to leave the airport area to, to do all your businesses, this sort of thing. Hopefully, while that city expands, who knows, it might take over Freetown. 
Confucian Riley has exhausted his uh, carrying capacity. And then the biggest hurdle, of course, for now is the link between International Airport and Freetown, the capital city. Again, a bridge is part of the, this three-pronged approach. We're trying to sell it to, to, to investors, and very soon we may be calling another investment forum to look at that. At the seaport, we now have international uh, companies running the seaport for us in terms of containerization. Uh, Bolloré, a big uh, French company, is looking at it. We're also looking at what it takes to look at um, uh, how to facilitate uh, 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 process relating to clearance facilities, port clearance, customs clearance, shipping, and all of that. So I think um, we have the investors in mind because this they are our hope now, given what is happening in the, the donor front. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at uh, private foreign investors to come and partner with us. And that's why the government is very, very ready to accommodate them and discuss with them so that we'll be able to move in. As I said earlier, as partners, not as, uh, I warn them, not as business enterprises alone, but as partners in development. Now there's a few concerns, of course, that investors have, which is the case with every uh, country. Mm, mm. And uh, one of the concerns is how easy is it to uh, get goods in and get goods out? Um, how much hassle is there? Um, even worries about uh, corruption, getting your goods out, things like that. Yeah, yeah. What is the government doing to make sure that this uh, is um, uh, made um, according to norms uh, yeah, that we are yeah. used to in that is uh, true. Western Europe? I think what we're trying to do is to build institutions. Institutions that will replace uh, personal discretion, uh, that will replace the human touch in, in the processing of customs clearance, in the processing of, of ports clearance. And so, as I said earlier, we now have a big company that is running our containerization. Uh, it's a company called Bolloré from, from France. I think they are very, very big. And uh, it's easier when you deal with them. So you don't have anything to do with the government or government officials, this sort of thing. And then even the aspects of, we have one aspect called inspection to ensure that uh, the goods are not uh, under invoice, just for recording purposes, also for tax purposes. We also institutionalize in that. Very soon the government will appoint a reputable company to run that. So the government is taking its hands off, watching out all of this and bringing in those institutions that have reputation, international reputation, to, to, to undergo these, these processes. And that's our only hope. That's our big hope. We're having that at the airports and we're trying to do that at the ports. You know? um, but of course, once you don't have, uh, you don't have ships and this sort of thing, so one area is freight. Freight is still very high, we understand. But we're trying to address that, that aspect as well. But I think it is much easier now. It is much easier and the environment is much better. Um, the aspect of corruption I think has been reduced significantly by, the, by, by encouraging these international companies to come and help run some of these areas. Is there some last thought, some last word that you would uh, say to investors? Well, the, the last one I would say is that, as, I, as we always keep saying, Sierra Leone is not the Sierra Leone before. Sierra Leone today is a different Sierra Leone. And Sierra Leone to, tomorrow will be a Sierra Leone for everybody. It will be a Sierra Leone with the clean, clear rules of, of engagement, this sort of thing. So I think uh, investors should, should really take Sierra Leone as a, a country that is evolving that is growing and therefore it has a lot of opportunities that is engaging, you know, this sort of thing. So uh, we look forward to as many investors as possible. Time, what are the, the most interesting points of Sierra Leone? So why should people come to Sierra Leone? Come to Sierra Leone. Uh, there is peace, there is a strong political stability and the economy is also not doing badly. There is a strong macroeconomy. Uh, environment, but over and above that, I think we have a strong leadership that is uh, um, very sure about a clear path, uh, future direction. Uh, in terms of investments, I think we have done a lot to, to improve on the investment climate, uh, contracting uh, relationships with businesses, and uh, we've 
you have a good package of incentives, tax breaks, and these sort of things. But I think what investors more interested in, we have um, opportunities that are highly profitable from whatever perspective you may look at in mining, in, in agriculture, certainly the banking territory in terms of um, value additions and investments in manufacturing in all sectors. In fish rich, for instance, I know the we still haven't yet been able to to, to, to enter the local market in fish, but we have the best, among the best, the best fishes in the world. And uh, once we are able, we are able to have some good investment, local investment that can lead as a gateway to enter the local fish market. Thank you guys again for watching that and I appreciate it. And she just said that, you know, um, the video only got about 5,000 views, you know, and um, all Sierra Leoneans should watch this video.